This is the Bible Basics Radio Program with Jason Anderson, the preacher at the Southern Hope Church of Christ, located in Falmouth, Kentucky. Welcome back to the Bible Basics Radio Program. Today we're going to begin with the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light. He came to bear witness about the light true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world he was in the world the world was made through him yet the world did not know him he came to his own and his own people did not receive him but to all who did receive him who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of god who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor the will of man but of God. The Apostle John begins his gospel of Jesus Christ by examining creation. Why? One reason is, is that the creation account is the beginning of the scriptures. John is connecting Jesus Christ with the creation of the world, and thus the very beginning of the Bible. The creation account that is found in the book of Genesis is an essential passage in the Bible. In order to truly understand the Bible, God, Jesus Christ, sin, and human beings, one must begin with the foundation of scriptures which is the creation of the world. In today's lesson, we will examine the Christian account as it is recorded in Genesis and see what important lessons we can learn from it. We begin with Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. Let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. And there was evening, there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with waters over living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kinds. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, And let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and of the birds of the air and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. 
and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is in the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. The first lesson that we can learn from the creation account in the Bible is that God is the creator. The Bible simply opens up as, in the beginning, God. The earth and the universe is not eternal. It had a beginning. When God created the earth, he did it without using any material. God spoke, and the universe was created. Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 3. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what was seen was not made out of things that are visible. God did not need any material in order to create this world or this universe. Anything and everything that exists, exists because God created it. He was before all things. He willed everything into existence. Now, because God created everything, he himself is above everything. He is the only being that exists that has no creator. He had no beginning. There is no one higher for him to be accountable to. He is the highest authority in the universe. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the beginning of everything that exists. He alone has always been immortal and eternal. Since God created the universe, he owns it. This means that everything that exists in creation is his possession. Whether it's things on this earth, whether it's things in this universe, whether it's the things in heaven, it is all God's possession. He created it, therefore it is his possession. This means that he has the absolute final say on how his creation is to be used. No one else, whether it would be human beings, angels, animals, whatever, no one else, has the right to establish right and wrong, moral and immoral, ethical behavior, except for God. For he alone is the owner of all creation. As creator, God is therefore greater than the universe. We marvel how great this universe really is. It is an amazing universe. In fact, we cannot fathom everything in this universe. And we are continually learning about what exists in this universe. We marvel at the magnificence of this world. We have been studying this world since the beginning of time, and we are still learning things about this creation. We are in awe of how the human body works, how it takes care of itself. How much more should we be in awe of the one who created, designed, and established all that we see and do not see. We marvel at how great this universe is, but we have even a greater God who created it, designed it, and built it. God also has complete control of this earth. Now, God did design this world to work and operate according to the laws of nature that he himself established. However, when he sees the need, God can manipulate the laws of nature to fulfill his will in this world. In the Bible, this is the very definition of a miracle. A miracle is when God bends or breaks the rules and laws of nature to accomplish his will. In Genesis 1, we also see that creation is very good. After every day of creation, the Bible says that God saw that it was good. God created this world to be a perfect paradise for us to live in. When this world was first created, there was no death. There was no disease. There was no destruction. Those things entered into this world as a result of sin. As the Apostle Paul testifies in Romans chapter 6, starting with verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Bible makes it very clear that death is the result of sin. Disease is the result of sin. Before sin existed, death did not exist. This is why the earth was good. All the things that make our life miserable in this world did not exist when this world was first created. They came as a result of sin. Sin is the result of a free will choice. We choose to sin. It is not forced upon us. The book of James, chapter 1, starting with verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. 
For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. God did not originally create this world to have sin in it. This means that death was not originally in this world. However, with free will comes the ability to choose sin. When man sinned, this perfect world was corrupted, and we now pay the price for that corruption. On the last day of creation, God created man and woman. Human beings were planned and designed by God. Genesis also tells us something different about mankind. We are designed in the very image of God. No other creature on God's earth is designed as being made in the image of God. Biblically, this is what separates us from the animals. Genesis chapter 2 gives us great detail on the creation of man and woman. When we examine it, we learn a lot about human beings. Genesis chapter 2, starting with verse 5. When no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. And a mist was going up from the land, and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in the east, and there he put man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, in a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and all the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of the ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. From this very passage, we learn that man was able to think, to create, and to communicate from the very beginning. Adam and Eve were instantly able to talk, to understand what was said to them, and to receive knowledge from God. This was not something that evolved over time, but was something that man was designed to do. God made human beings to think like him. We also see that man was given the free will choice to follow God from the beginning. Man was never forced to follow God. Man was commanded to follow God. If man disobeyed, then he paid the price for his disobedience. We also see here that God established marriage and the family unit at creation. When God designed Adam and Eve, he created the first marriage and therefore the first family. This is God's design for man. As such, we do not have the right to alter it or change it. It is God who established the family unit, not man. In the beginning, man also had a perfect relationship with God. Sin destroyed the perfect fellowship that man had with God. Jesus Christ came to this earth to fix this problem. He came to restore man's relationship with God and allow man the opportunity to return to the paradise that God created. This is how the Bible closes. In Revelation chapter 21, start with verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. It will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. The Bible teaches us how to return to that original relationship, status, and paradise that God intended for us to have. And that's what we'll be looking at over the next few weeks. How to return to this ideal place that God had established for mankind in the beginning. When did sin first enter into this world? We will look at that next week. So please join us in that study. This has been the Bible Basics Radio Program with Jason Anderson, the director of Restoring the Christian Way Ministries and also the preacher at the Southern Hope 
Church of Christ, located at 20 Southside Church Road in Falmouth, Kentucky, 41040. You can email us at BibleBasicsRadio at gmail.com. You can find the Bible Basics Radio program and the Southern Hope Church of Christ on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.